Krista Boone. It's that time. That's all it took was just a touch from David. Okay, so now we're on. Everybody can hear. This is, Darius was asking me about rules a while ago. This is the most laid back church you will ever come to. There are no rules in, in this church. We just go with the Spirit. And I have already prayed for each and every one of you and for the Holy Spirit to arrive. And so here we are. And we are going to get about God's business here pretty soon. Uh, have we got any prayer requests? I guess I should tell the folks online good morning, and if this is your first time visiting us, we're, we're just a little crazy here in Gold Hill, uh, but you'll get used to that if you come back. And if you have, if you're new, if you would just uh, type in where you're from and how we best can pray for you, that would be great. We do have a prayer team, and uh, we just do love to pray for one another. So any prayer request? Yep, I got some of that written down. <laughs> Any other prayer request? Praise reports. Zeb Boss. Zeb Boss. Uh, do you want to tell about Zeb or do you want me to give a. Can y'all hear her? basically been with Zeb 24-7 this week with all of his health problems that he's having. And, um, you know, he's seven, and to be as active as he has all these years, it's, it's, it's difficult to watch him sit in a chair and his, uh, his oxygen level plummets if he walks around very much at all. So that's, that's a problem. Last week we had prayed for Carolyn's neighbor, 93 years old. Was it Tuesday or Monday? Monday she passed away. And so they're going to have the funeral up in Pennsylvania, but they're going to have a mass here Saturday. Okay, all in Pennsylvania. So the neighbors are, are broken. They were all very close to this woman, and so they're a little broken. And her name was Louise. Louise. I can't say her last name, and I'm not going to try. When you wrote that to me, I went, Louise. <laughs> God knows who Louise is. All right. Um, I also have a few prayer requests um, for all of our shut-ins. I, I didn't get to see as many this week as I'd hoped. There's next week's coming. I had some other meetings that that uh, kind of took. It, it just I ran out of time. Basically, is what happened. I ran out of time. But it's summertime, and so we, when we have the children now, it's an all-day event instead of just from 3 o'clock to supper time. And we had the children two days this week. But um, I, I hope to get to see Shirley and Glenna this week. I didn't get to see them um, this past week. And 
I had Israel on my prayer list, and I also have, I don't know if y'all heard this morning, but um, I know a couple of days ago there was a big fire in one of the Baptist churches in Dallas. Well, yesterday it happened again to another Baptist church in Dallas. So I don't know what's going on in Dallas, but if we could put this... I'm, I'm thinking somebody's an arsenic or something. I don't. I think that's too coincidental that two big Baptist churches get burnt down. Um, so if we could remember those fires in Dallas and the fires in California that are spreading. I've, I've got a message from a friend of mine that had a friend right in the pathway. And it doesn't matter. God tells us to pray for strangers and enemies and friends. And these are strangers to us, but we still need to pray for them. So the fires in California also. And um, the Middle East is just a mess. It's just a mess. Um, so we do have, we have a lot to be grateful for. And we have a lot to be concerned about. I'm grateful that I do live in America. But I'm concerned about America. So uh, we, just, we just need to keep things up. I did get a message from Donna. She's doing well and she appreciates all the prayers. And so just keep her lifted. And Jan is like, I think Jan's going like three steps forward and two steps back. That's, that's kind of the way it sounded to me. I didn't hear that last sentence. She visits her oh, this Tuesday. Okay, okay. So we'll know more after Tuesday. Any chance she's going to be able to be here next week? You. Is there any chance she will be able to be here next week? Okay. We're all we're all on our knees this week that Jan's going to improve enough to be able to be here Sunday to dedicate the piano. And I want all of y'all to promise me you're going to invite friends and family and neighbors to be here next week because it's going to be a good Sunday. Because you're not going to have to hear so much of me. I'm just going to read some scriptures and we're going to sing. Um... I think that is all that I had, and um, I am going to ask if anybody has a testimony that they would like to give this morning. This will be a real good time to step forward. Well, step forward means come up here. <laughs> no. Our friends that are at home want to hear the story. I think you're dressed great. I thought you were going to a dance. <laughs> well, I have an interesting uh, incident. In the mornings with friends, I have
Lucifer here saw us. I'm in the right area, but I'm wandering around looking at the I know I've seen it here. <laughs> walking back and forth. And for some time, and this lady comes up to me, she says, Are you lost? And I said, I sure am at this moment. <laughs> and she handed me a little handwritten sheet that read a little note had some scripture on it and a radio station that I should listen to. She said, this will help you find your way. And I said, well, before you walk off, would you have to know where the wishes you thought of? And she said, it's right there, it's right in front of me. And so these, these two events on the same day, uh, and I had lots of very empathetic and really good friends of mine in high and uh, Steve Davis is his name. He's, he's retired for the Thomas. A really good Christian. He's been talking to me and helping me try to find my way for 45 years. And so I told him about those two events, and he said it's God's way of nudging you closer to where you need to be. I said, I said I told Steve, I said, well, you know, I, I, can, I can get that. But it's going to take more than a nudge. He said, well, enough nudges to get you. So that's, that was my story for last week. Which I think deserves at least six or seven amens. <laughs> And if anybody thinks that God's ready for this church to close, just remember what strangers that have never walked in here have done for us, for the prayers that are being prayed for us. God is not finished with us yet. And we have just got to feel the nudge. We're probably not going to all get nudged with $500, but he's working. He's working when we need it. He's working with all of us. And I didn't ask her if I could do this, but I'm going to because I just, the Spirit's just leading me there, Sandy. And I would like for you, Sandy is offering to teach Sunday school for us. And I would like to say we'll start in September. And I would like to just take a vote right now. If we finish up our services at 10.30 and go downstairs and have a little drink and a little cookie or something and start Sunday school at 10.45, would we be open to that idea to have a small group Sunday school on Sunday morning? I better see some hands up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you could just surprise them, but you can tell them that this is your moment. You you can. So God has sent us a teacher, and that teacher already had a year's worth of lesson plans. 
God is sending us gifts that we were not looking for. God is up to something here. God's up to something. And we've just got to hold on to that. And I'm probably used all of my time. We're going to uh, <clears throat> begin worship. If you'll just stay seated, turn to page 158, and then we're going to go into prayer. <clears throat> just the first verse of 158. and that the Holy Spirit is so alive. I've gotten a phone call, and I know you're sending a sweet little couple next week for us to, for them to, to come to our church that have just moved in on Dobie Street. Lord, we are so humbled and so amazed by your goodness. We just can't in our human minds understand the love you have us when so much is going wrong. We can look at people lighting fires in churches. We can look at Hamas throwing bombs on children. We can look at all these things and point fingers and say, look what they're doing. And not look at ourselves to see what we're doing. When we say or do something that hurts another, when we don't give our time to you in the mornings, David and I are a little bit behind on our Bible reading, and I ask you to forgive us for that and help us to get caught up. God, we sin and we break your heart every day, and yet you are still out there working without us even knowing about it. And all we can say is thank you, God. Thank you. We lift up Gary, who's about to have surgery. Paula, who's going to be having surgery on Tuesday, I believe. We lift up Jan, who is healing and getting a little better every day. I give and lift up Shirley to you, who would so much like to be with us. And Lord, if not... We just ask that you stay near and hold them tight. Put your arms around them hard enough that they can feel it. God, I, I thank you for I thank you for taking care of sweet Carly. And she's in a safe place with her pregnancy right now. You give us more good things than bad. Help us. To keep our hearts on the goodness, on the blessings, on the mercy you show us every day. Father, I ask that you bless this church. I ask that you bless every person whose name is on the roll book. I ask that you give everyone a nudge. A nudge that they can feel and hear and understand that it is you. That you are calling them back. I ask you, Father, to anoint this worship service, this time we're about to have with you. I thank you for my week, for the roller coasters, the ups and downs. We all have those ups and downs, Father, and when we're down, sometimes we forget to reach up. 
So Father, I just ask that you be with us in this next, in this hour, this holy time that we set apart to be with you. And I ask that when we leave this place, we will leave knowing that we have seen you at work. That we will leave knowing that we have seen your face of grace. And now, Father, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we lift up the most holy and perfect prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
to 15%. Thank you, Darius and Lamar. I will be reading... I'm blaming this on Ellie Jo. She, she takes my iPad and wears it down. I did plug it in last night, but apparently something didn't shake hands. So, Lamar and Darius, my heroes, saved the day today. I will be reading to you this morning Ephesians 3, 14 through 21, and if you want to leave your Bibles open, I'm just basically going to be going through this this morning for our um, sermon. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably good and immeasurably more than we ask or pray for within us, to him be the glory, to him be the power in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations, forever and forever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me and for me? May the words of my mouth, may the thoughts in our hearts be pure and acceptable in thy sight. And in this holy hour, Lord, help us to leave the distractions of the day outside and be fully in your presence. Amen. Well, I really don't need to preach after that testimony. I appreciate that, Darius, that I needed to hear that. That was good news from the streets. We, we can make Darius a street preacher, I believe. That, that would take a, a little bit more nudging, right? <laughs> plan, I fall to my knees. And that's very important to understand because Jews did not pray on their knees. He says, I fall to my knees and I pray to the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. Paul is starting one of the millions of prayers that he prayed often. And often his prayers are for us. If you just go through epistles and the letters, you can almost hear him talking to us. He prayed these yeah, he was praying to the Ephesians at the time he was writing this. He was praying to the prison guards who were around him, but he was also praying for the Gentiles. He was praying for all who believe in God, who believe in his time, the present, and who will believe in the future. And that's us. And if you look on your little homework sheet, God created us. And he promises us his love, his power to his family, us. That's your first blank. Paul prays in verse 17 that Christ will live in our hearts. 13 books and 7 letters. He explains that he is the very least of all the saints living or dead. It's safe to say that if Paul was writing, he was probably in prison because that's the only time he was still long enough to write. He was experiencing hard times when he wrote these words to all of us and to the... He was probably just come through a beating or 
some kind of torture. And yet he knew that God still loved him. We're not in Israel having bombs dropped on us. We're not in Ukraine having bombs dropped on us. Do we know God still loves us? Could we write these words? In his prayer, Paul is making it clear to the people that he is in prison because of the work he is doing for the Gentiles. That means that the Jews, that the Romans have arrested him because he's preaching to the Gentiles. He's preaching to me and you. And he's doing this. He's in the service of God in the mystery of Christ. And that mystery that was hidden in the past, in the Old Testament, we had prophets and we didn't understand what they were talking about. Prophets didn't understand what they were talking about. We have to understand that. They just were repeating the words of God. This revelation that John saw, he didn't know what he was talking about about but Sandy's going to make it all clear <laughs> that's that's uh don't don't feel any pressure there okay Holy Spirit's going to step in she's claiming evil sin and in this world it's the beginning it goes back to the garden sin is the problem and Jesus is the answer and the invitation to come is because you're part of the family. What is the cause that's making Paul today? Well, I've read it and read it, and, and I believe the simple answer is unity. Because we have to remember the world he's living in. And his world has disintegrated into chaos. He went from being the biggest Whig in the Roman army to a nothing. He is the enemy of the Jews. And now he's an enemy of, the Rome, of Romans. He doesn't fit in anywhere. Have you ever been to an event and you just felt like you didn't fit in? This, this is Paul. He doesn't fit in anywhere. But yet he is still willing to be tortured and beaten and put in prison for Jesus. Let me share a few highlights of my week this week. It started, and I can say the name now, it started when Sandy morning wanted to talk to me. So we, she's got a lot more plans than just Sunday school. Her heart is so on fire for this church and there's so much that she wants to see happen and I happen to know that Darius might be a part of that plan she'll talk to you later uh, but she's got big dreams have we quit dreaming she's got dreams and 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 so it you know I just sat and listened I just probably everybody around us thought I was a little crazy we all know that that but you don't know what that does to a preacher. I want to help build the church. I say, right on. And so you know, singing that whole morning with her. I got home and I started working and researching. It took me two or three days, multiple hours to write a sermon. I got my notes and I made an outline and the hours of work were done. I had to get it finished by Tuesday because the to invade us Wednesday and they were not going to leave till Thursday night so got everything ready to put together I was going to put it together Friday that was my plan Friday I had made plans to go to a gentleman that I think all of y'all know in here he has been faithfully following us for about three years now and I, I have never met this man, and I didn't know him, and I had no connections to him. But I needed to find out who he was. All I knew is he lived in Rockwell. And I needed to, to go visit him. And so I was going to just send him a FaceTime message, Facebook message, and, and everything. Well, when Bing and, and Mike got married, wedding, someone came up to me, and she said... I just have to tell you, my daddy watches you every Sunday, and he just loves your church. And I said, you're Albert's daughter, aren't you? And she said, yeah. I went to Friday and had the most beautiful day with 
I heard about Darius. I heard about John Yeldon. I heard about digging under this church. He helped dig out the foundation for this church. It was a wonderful day. And not only that, after we talked for several hours and we just kept finding people we knew, he grew up near Carolyn, and and it just it just felt like someone that had been a friend of mine forever. And then his grandson finished mowing up the yard and comes in, and they introduced me to him. And says, "You're." Just and so then the stories just start all over again. There were so. So far, I've had a beautiful week, right? It was beautiful. So the more we talked, the more we found out we had so much in common. Five hours later, I left his house reluctantly. And I came home, and, and, and I came to get my sermon put together. As it was ready, I just had to put it together. Well, when I went to looking for my notes and my outline, everything, so I could pick out the hymns to get she could come in over here and practice on Saturday morning. It was nowhere to be found. David couldn't even find it. My IT guy couldn't find it. Well, when David can't find something on the computer, it's lost. It's lost, lost. And so I pouted a little bit and then just put it out of my mind. I said, like Scarlett O'Hara, I think tomorrow. I was just so frustrated. So then David turns on the Olympics. Know about you, but I was just so offended by the opening of those Olympics, seeing this evil, look like evil something, carrying the flame and dancing around, and, and if you watch the opening, you know. If you don't, just get online, and I'm sure you can find it, but it was horrible. And so I went to read a book, Sandy. I just didn't, I just didn't want any part of that. And then, then David, realizing that I just didn't want to watch it, he, he watched the, the end of it, and then we went on to something else. I was thinking when I woke up Saturday morning to restart the research and the energy to write another sermon. Ephesians, the scripture I just read, is the liturgical scripture for this. I said, hmm, I bet Paul's had a week like mine. <laughs> I bet he's ridden those roller coasters going up and down a few times. I believe, folks, I want to tell you, I believe in the works of Satan. But I stand on the power of God. Amen. Satan has no power over God. Because I got a sermon put together today. <laughs> but Satan has been at work. Look around us. Where are our friends and family? We went through division. And then we had another division. Satan is doing everything he can to empty the church. But we got people like Sandy and, and Mike who's not here today. They're not wanting that. And none of y'all are wanting to see that happen because you keep showing up every week. Satan is hard at work. He knows if he can divide the family, which he has done, then he can divide the churches, and then he wins. Well, he'll win that. But he's not going to win the war. In the end, we have victory. When Paul is talking in the scripture that we wrote, he's in verse 16... Paul is talking about that inner self. If you look at 16, it says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources that he will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. Now when, when he's talking about that inner strength, I, I, I'm confident that what he's talking about is God's power because he mentions the Holy Spirit. It says, and, and Paul can get through these countless prison times and visits and beatings and torture he's gone through. He can surely get me through a Saturday of writing a new sermon. So when this is all over, you can tell me if it was worth it or not. The power of the Holy Spirit can get this country through what I believe is the worst political time I can remember in my life. Um, so just 70 short years, I believe this is the worst political time I've ever 
It, it, it can get us, the Holy Spirit can get us through crazy thinking of sinful people that want to destroy our Christianity. And that's what I saw on the Olympics. I saw a mockery of Christianity. Can heal our broken hearts. In verse 16, you can pull up your homework sheet. We see the words within a man's inner life. Paul is praying for our inner well-being. In Corinthians 4, Paul writes that our outward body is perishing. The inward man, our soul, is being renewed day by day by day. Today might have been a bad day. Friday, Friday was a great day until I got home and then it fell apart, but Saturday came. It was a great day. He renews us day by day. We have to remember if we're having that bad, no good, rotten day like Alexander, you know who Alexander is, that a good day is coming. That just means the Holy Spirit's got something to work on. Amen? He doesn't have anything to work on, folks, if we're perfect and life is going great. But if we're having a dirty, rotten, no good day, He's got something to work on. See, we're all, <clears throat> believe it or not, I, I'm going to tell you something you don't know. We're all getting older. Every we are all decaying. We are all deteriorating. But there is also something that is becoming more vital and more beautiful and becoming richer and deeper and stronger every day as we live. And that is that relationship with God. That's our being. God is working in us all the time. Even when you go home and you're, wherever you saved your sermon, it is not there. David figured out on the way over here, he thinks now he knows where it is. We'll find out when we get home. This is what Paul refers to as the inner being, our soul, our heart. God planned and he designed us so that all elements of our human cells will be brought to one and we will be abiding in and living with Jesus Christ. But that cannot be done unless the church carries this message of Christ and the love of God to in. And that means all of those NYCs that I talk about, the not yet Christians, the people that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ. And believe me, they are all around us here in this little village. We've got people that do not know the love of Christ and some that have never heard the name of Jesus or God or Christ unless it was in a way that we would never say it. They don't understand that Jesus was a real person them. And it's for this reason and it's for this cause that Paul prays in his cell, prison cell. He's praying that the people that are within the church will be such that the church will become the whole body of Christ. Note at the beginning of the prayer, the scripture that I read, well no, in verse 1, he writes, for this reason I bow on my knees before the Father. Friends, that by itself shows us that this prayer that Paul is praying is very intense. He was on his knees. Do you know how Jews pray? When Jews pray, their arms are right. Do not get on your knees for anybody. Paul. The greatest Roman soldier, the most famous Roman soldier we know, was on his knees. He earnestly desired to see the praying for the church to happen. A praying or laying down on the ground posture, that shows surrender and complete dependence on our Father of heaven. Jesus demonstrated this posture to us in the garden. We all remember that in Matthew 28. And, and going a little farther, he knelt face down and he prayed, My Father. We remember that. Second half of that verse that I just read is, Before Father, I bow down. 
not even the Father present on earth have had a father he loves me he knows all about my 20s and 30s and teen years and he loves me anyway warts and all God's never going to leave me and one day I'll see my earthly father again but I have a heavenly father that I can run to when I fall down and skin my knee. He will kiss them and rub them. He will tell me it will be okay. And I believe him. Walk alone. Even when I walked away from him, he was there. He never left me. We serve. We serve sweet Jesus. And he's so good to us. On all of us. And then he's going to take us to dinner. And our name will be on our plate. You see, this is what Paul about with all of his heart while he is in prison with the uh, does that sound like anybody else that prayed that we know? He was sweating, believe he was praying for us. He got the words written down so we wouldn't forget it. Paul the apostle is praying for the church. He's praying for you. He's praying for me. And he is specifically praying that the church will accomplish the very things that will bring glory to God, that will call the cause the angels to just marvel at the wisdom of God. Like I said a while ago, God's up to something in this village. He's up to something in this church. We've just got to let go and be willing. We've got to be willing. That means, I'm sorry friends, but we got a lot of work to do. Request. This request is like else that we're given. Christian life. If you look at your cannot accomplish requires own own. God's work spiritual strength. We can't do it by we need spiritual strength, a love for one another, and a love for the degree that we, on our own, can never The answer today, it's this church, it's our community, it's those who have quietly walked away. The answer to this dilemma in God alone. He is always things that we require so that we can do the things that he requires. It's very important that we pray just as Paul prayed. And I want to encourage you to pray understanding that God is the sovereign God. I want to encourage you to use sovereign God language Prayers. I want to encourage you to believe the words that are coming out of your mouth. And if you can't put the words together, go to your Bible and borrow some of Paul's or go to the Psalms or pick up your hymn book. Any hymn in here is a prayer. If you can't get it together yourself, let the Spirit pray for you. But we have lots of resources for good prayers. The saints... Pray with all the saints that what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth is from God. Remember I told you that I climbed the lighthouse last week. And when I did that, I could look out and I could see that ocean that just went on forever. Christ is that vast. And it's and it's as high as the highest we can see in the sky. The Paul.
cause of loves you more than your mind will ever allow you to imagine. We have no understanding of how he loves us. And so I ask, give him a chance. In Hebrews, <clears throat> if you look at your little Hebrews thing here, Paul writes that Jesus is able once and forever to save everyone who comes to him. But before they can come, they have to hear his name. He lives forever on their behalf. No man is outside of the love of Christ. And no place is outside of his reach. I'm sure Darius living here uh, just right on, on the streets, the main street of... Uh, you probably see a lot of lost people walking around. And we, we, we need to be available to them. Because there's people right outside our door. And then Paul, Paul comes back to the, main, to the main thing, to the main point in this passage. Where is that love to be experienced? Well, maybe right outside Vivian and Darius's door. Maybe I need to get up here on Friday nights. Maybe I need to be here more Saturdays than I am here. Maybe we need to have a prayer time in the yard instead of around the altar. There's a lot of things to be doing to let people know that we love them. When we experience love, with God's people, we are experiencing the love of God. Think about that. We will find it in the, in, in the people. We will find it in the church. Mostly we will find it in that inner being of ourself. Because that's Jesus Christ. And we're going to find it in the person to the left of us and to the right of us. John Wesley has a saying that's very true that kept coming back to me. He says that God knows nothing of solitary religion. No man, he said, ever went to heaven alone. And you know, that means so much. Like, I've got somebody that I really want at this church. But they're just really happy to watch us online. And I'm like, you can't. You can't be in communion with others just watching online. So we've got to encourage these people. We need them here so that we can love on them. And I'm not giving up. Hopefully that will come. The church has got its faults because the church is made up of people and sinful people. And so, yeah, we've got our faults. Some church members might be very far from where they ought to be. I know that this preacher is human, and she slips, and she falls sometimes. But in the fellowship of this church, when I start thinking and praying to God and thinking about y'all, I know that, that I can find the love of God in your forgiving hearts. And that's what we are to each other. We hold each other accountable, hold each other up, and we love one you can't do that behind a screen. You can't do that just having a private Bible study on your porch. All of that is good. But we need fellowship with one another. This is not what it's meant to be. I think every one of us came in here this morning with broken hearts because of the world. And, and, and it's torn and, and it's in asunder by hostile forces of, of hatred and strife. I've, I've just never seen it like this. Maybe it was in the 60s. Maybe this is what they went through in the 60s when, when we were trying to, to work through civil rights. I don't know. I was just a little girl then. This is terrible today. But I keep remembering that it's God's design and plan for all men and women, all nations, to become one in Christ. I cannot sit at home and pout because somebody offended me at the opening of the Olympics. And share the word. God needs this church to build his kingdom. He needs you. He needs me.
And the church cannot do that until its members are joined. Until we all experience the limit of Christ. The secret to all that God needs the church to do is the presence of Christ within our lives. Christ will gladly come into a man's life, but he must wait in. He must wait for our invitation, and that means we've got to let others know. He's there, he's, he's guarding you, he's caring for you, but he can't come into your heart until you ask him. To bar in verse 20, Now to him who by the power at work... <coughs> in us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I ask you as we close out this service pray with me Paul's word printed in your bulletin. May we let Christ dwell in our hearts. We are being rooted and grounded in love. You may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you will be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. If you are able, will you stand and join us on 26?
us today. Let us lead on fire like the Holy Spirit for your church and for your people. And Lord, we just ask you to give us wisdom when you give us an opportunity and give us courage to take that opportunity. <clears throat> Satan has not won this battle. All these things we ask in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.